Hello, valued viewers. I hope you are all doing very well. So, I have a quick question for you. If you were starting a railroad in the 1940s, what steam locomotive would you start your railroad company with? Let me know in the comments below, and the locomotive with the most votes will get its own video if I have not already done a video on that locomotive. With that, enjoy this video, Norfolk and Western's Modern Steam Fleet, the Class A and Class Y. During the 1940s, uh, many railroads wanted to dieselize their road freight operations during World War II. During that time, the War Production Board simply denied the request for EMDs FTs uh, simply because of demands elsewhere for the war effort. The Norfolk and Western Railroad had no such urge because they had achieved what the other companies had sought to achieve with their own modern steam locomotive designs. The 15 recently built Y6A locomotives plus their immediate predecessors, the Y5 and the Y6 locomotives, achieved utilization records equivalent to diesels and similar service assignments, all in thanks to their intrinsically sound designs and the Norfolk and Western's remarkably efficient service facilities. And folks, having said that, I have to tell you that I find the Norfolk and Western's operation on the whole, especially during the uh, later years of steam to be just remarkable and foresighted and well planned out uh in my opinion the best steam locomotive operation um during those times they had steam operations down to a literal science they could take an inbound freight locomotive have it cold watered serviced and ready to go within an hour and this is exactly how they made steam operations every bit as efficient as the diesel operations were in that time frame. And these practices is also what made steam very viable to the Norfolk and Western up until 1961, where every other railroad had ceased steam operations by the mid 1950s. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my assessment about the Norfolk and Western Railroad uh, being the best during that era. So in May of 1936, a new era of steam began at the Norfolk and Western with the delivery of its first Class A 2664 uh, steam locomotive from the Roanoke shops. Locomotive number 1200 was a high-wheeled, simple articulated design for high-speed performance on either freight or passenger trains. The Class A was the first Norfolk and Western locomotive with roller bearings on all axles and she was capable of maintaining speeds in excess of 70 miles per hour and she exerted a sustained drawbore horsepower of 6,300 pounds at 45 miles an hour, which was more pulling power than five of the most powerful diesels that were available at that time. The delivery of Y6-2120 in September of 1936 meant huge improvements in the transit of tonnage freights over the hillier parts of the Norfolk and Western system. These new locomotives came at a rather fortuitous time. Shortly, the Norfolk and Western resources were once again more severely strained by world conflict. The locomotives of the Class A and Y6 classes comprised of nearly one-third of the locomotives assigned to road freight service. Yet by 1945, their high reliability and availability enabled them to account for 68% of the system's total freight mileage. So folks, that in itself just tells you that the Norfolk and Western weren't buying and installing their parts from the local pet boy stores. And this is one of the biggest attributes to the Norfolk and Western's success with steam operations uh, as we now know lasted up until 1961. The Norfolk and Western just simply had the foresight to build their locomotives with nothing but the highest quality of parts, which allowed their locomotives to stay continuously operational for far greater periods of times than competing railroads were with their Alco or Baldwin built uh, locomotives. This simple practice is the key attribute as to how the Norfolk and Western made their steam locomotives as viable financially to maintain than diesel locomotives were during that time frame. After World War II ended and freight service slacked off, the new Class A and Class Y locomotives did even more work than ever before simply because the older Y4s and such were retired. As such, these new locomotives were handling 94% of the, of the Norfolk and Western's freight ton miles. 
To further our tests as to DA's efficiency, there was no Yellowstone 2884 that could run as fast. There was no Union Pacific Challenger 4664 that was as powerful. And the nearest competition, which became the Allegheny and the Virginia Blue Ridge, came some five years later and only enjoyed an advantage in greater steam capacity. But that capacity came at an enormous increase of locomotive weight. The following specifications apply to a modified Class A at the end of 1950. The locomotive weight was 573,100 pounds. The weight on the drivers was 432,350 pounds. The cylinders were 24 inches by 30 inches. The boiler pressure was 300 PSI. And the simple tractive effort was 114,000 pounds. Okie dokie, so with that, I'll just uh, skip all the way to the Y6B and skip the Y6 and the Y6A simply because the Y6B was the pinnacle of the Y6 uh, design and in my opinion the pinnacle of all steam locomotives uh, too with all things considered. Okay so before we get into the breakdown of the Y6B um, the Norfolk and Western operated on lines that weren't too dissimilar from the Chesapeake and Ohio you know did with the Alleghenies. So the Norfolk and Western operated out of Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, and West Virginia, uh, Kentucky, and also Ohio. Um, the Y6B in itself was the primary coal hauler uh, out of the Appalachian Mountains, and it was an extremely difficult and arduous uh, run to say the least. N&W's uh, Appalachian coal runs were probably the most difficult ones in the country. Okay, so the Y6B was a 2882 compound Malay. Okay, so for the more casual fan, uh, the difference between a simple and a compound steam engine is this. Um, in a simple steam engine, expansion of the steam takes place in only one cylinder. Whereas in a compound engine, there are two or more cylinders of increasing size for greater expansion of the steam and a higher efficiency. The first and smallest piston is operated by the initial high pressure steam and the second by the lower pressure steam exhausted from the first. So with that information, uh, the Norfolk and Western added a variable valve plumbing to the Y6B uh, which allowed the low pressure cylinders uh, to allow simple expansion steaming in all four cylinders at all speeds. So in other words, the Y6B could use all four cylinders for simple tractive effort and simple running. And if you ask me, that's a huge advantage over a locomotive such as the Big Boy and the um, Allegheny and, and such. If not for any other reason other than economy, you know. The Y6Bs were the last compound articulated uh, locomotives uh, and frankly they ranked as the best in just about every category that you can think of. The Y6B had a pulling load of 13,500 tons uh, at 25 miles an hour. The Y6B developed 5,500 indicated horsepower with a cutoff of the high pressure cylinders at 60% and in the low pressure cylinders the cutoff was 55%. Comparing the Y6B in the Union Pacific Big Boy um, and considering the weight on the rails, power to weight ratios, the overall length and the practical speeds, which nearly doubled that of the early compound Y series that Norfolk and Western uh, had produced. The economy of the operation itself of the Norfolk and Western, uh, the uh, quantity of the locomotives uh, that were built, uh, I'd have to say that the Y6B on the whole was probably the most successful articulated locomotive that was ever built. And that's over Big Boy, Challenger, Allegheny, uh, you name it. So basically the Norfolk and Western had approximately 35 years of tinkering with the compound Malay design. And the railroad wound up with a locomotive capable of producing a 5,600 pound drawbar horsepower at 25 miles an hour and they could go with a top speed at 50 miles an hour on an even grade with a full 13,500 ton pole. Um, and that was just perfect for the Norfolk and Western's uh, tonnage that they were required to haul uh, the grades and the curves. And they did all of this while maintaining the economy of compounding. 
and meanwhile doing it in a, with a locomotive that weighed some 100,000 pounds less than the CNO Allegheny or the Union Pacific Big Boy. And as always with the Norfolk and Western, these locomotives were carefully maintained and, and extremely well designed. Uh, very low maintenance issues uh, with them and they just simply took a beating in those coal fields uh, like no other locomotive ever did. And the Norfolk and Western only yielded to diesels only because the N&W could no longer afford to be the odd man out in the diesel parade. Meaning that they were the last railroad basically to be running steam on the main lines and they did so uh, up until about 1961. The last Y6B was completed in 1952 and the last one ran on Norfolk and Western's main line in April of 1960 with some being regulated to secondary duties uh, until 1961. Okay, so the following specifications apply to the Norfolk and Western Y6B. The locomotive weight was 582,900 pounds. The total weight with tender was 961,500 pounds. The main drivers were 58 inches. It burned coal for fuel. Uh, the coal capacity in the tender was 27.2 uh, tons. Uh, the water capacity was 22,000 U.S. gallons. The firebox uh, had a grade area of 106.2 uh, square feet. The boiler was 104 inches. The boiler pressure was 300 PSI. The locomotive had two low pressure cylinders at a massive 39 inches by 32 inches and two high pressure cylinders at 25 inches by 32 inches. As indicated earlier, the locomotive could run at maximum speeds of 50 miles an hour. Uh, the tractive effort was in simple was 166,000 pounds, uh, later 169,000 pounds, and compound it was 126,838 pounds. The one area uh, where the Allegheny and the Big Boy uh, outclassed the Y6B was a factor of adhesion at 3.30, which basically means that at times the Y6B could be prone to slipping. Otherwise, the adhesive weight was 522,850 pounds, which is actually pretty good. And the last specification on the Y6B is that it ran with Baker valve gears, which regulated the flow of steam into the cylinders. With that, we'll wrap up the video, and I'd like to say thank you for watching the video, and please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and turn on all of your notifications if you want to see uh, any future video that we post. All right, thank you once again. Bye.